Today we're going to learn how to crochet a stylish bishop sleeved cardigan from two simple hexagons. I'm Jess from Make and Do Crew and I'm so excited to show you how to make this lightweight, beginner-friendly sweater. If you love easy crochet garments made from simple shapes like this, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. As you follow along with this tutorial, you're going to want to have access to the free written pattern which you can find on makeanddocrew.com and it's also linked right below this video. Or if you'd like to print patterns, you can purchase my inexpensive ad-free PDF and that is formatted specifically for printing. It includes all the same information, but it also includes a bonus stitch chart and schematic. So that is great if you're a visual learner. To make your day date cardigan, we're gonna be using Vanna Style Yarn by Lion Brand. This is a DK weight yarn, so category three, and it's 100% machine washable acrylic. You're also gonna need a size J crochet hook along with a tapestry needle, a measuring tape, and some stitch markers. Okay, let's have a quick chat about how this pattern works. I apologize, it's nearly impossible to get the whole cardigan in the frame, but believe it or not, it's actually made out of two hexagons. So the hexagons are forming what is the front and the back here of the cardigan, and then the sleeve. So that's, the first one is right here kind of forming an L shape, and then the second one is over here. So what's great about this pattern and what makes it so beginner friendly is that once you make a hexagon for this side, you're gonna replicate almost the exact same thing on this side. The only difference is where you attach your yarn during certain parts. And then the only seaming we're gonna do is along the top of the sleeve here and then to join the two hexagons in the middle of the back. And I promise you that seeming is actually kind of fun because it's so cool to see your hexagons turn into something you can actually wear. So now that we understand how the pattern works, let's go ahead and learn how to make the hexagons. To get started with my hexagon, I have a slip knot on my hook and then I'm going to chain four and then slip stitch into the first chain that we worked. So that's gonna create a nice little ring here. And I'm gonna work over the tail for my chain as I go here. Now we need to create six hexagon sides right from the get-go. And each hexagon side is gonna have three double crochets in it. And they're all gonna be separated by one chain. So this is how that looks. We're gonna chain three, and that counts as our first double crochet. Oops. And then we're gonna do two more double crochets because we need a total of three double crochets and that'll be our first hexagon side. Okay, so there's side one, and then I'm gonna chain one in between, and now we need to do the following thing a total of five times. So I've got to chain one, and then I'm going to ch double crochet three into that loop. And we'll repeat that five times to make five more hexagon sides. Okay, so it's hard to see because it's all jumbled in here, but we have one hexagon side here that's three double crochets separated by a chain and then three more double crochets. So we're gonna separate that by a chain and then let's work a total of four more hexagon sides so we can make it to the end of this round. And once you've worked your sixth side, make sure you have three double crochets in each one and they're each separated by a chain. And then you're gonna need to chain one more because that's gonna be between the first and sixth side. And we're gonna slip stitch right into the chain three from the beginning of the round. So that is gonna join this round. I tighten that down. Now we have what looks kind of like a circle. And round two is quite similar here. So we're gonna start with three chains Again, it counts as a double crochet, and then we're gonna double crochet in each double crochet until we get to the corner. And the corners are kind of hard to see at first, so you're just gonna have to kind of count and figure it out based on how many double crochets you have clustered together. So we, have, we should have two double crochets to work until we get to that corner. And at this corner and all the other corners, we are going to do two double crochets in that space and then a chain two and then two more double crochets. So I know it sounds like a lot to pack into the corner and that's what's gonna make our hexagon a little bit ripply and that's totally fine. It should look a little wavy. So I've got those two double crochets, I chained two and then I'm going to 
double crochet twice more in that same corner space. All right, so that's our first corner. Now we're gonna repeat the same thing we just did here five times. So we won't start with a chain three, but we are gonna work in each double crochet of the side. So we should have three double crochets to work into here. So there's one, two, and three. And that's completed our second side now. And now we've made it to a corner. You kind of have to just figure that out based on counting the number of double crochets because they're kind of hard to see on row one or round one. So we've got that corner right here and at the corner, each corner, we're going to double crochet two and then chain two and then double crochet two more. So there's one, two, and then there's my chain two and I'll do two more double crochets in that corner. So you're probably kind of seeing the pattern here now. Each side gets double crochets and all the double crochet stitches, and then you're gonna, in each corner, do a double crochet twice, and then chain twice, and then a double crochet twice. So you're technically adding six stitches to each corner. So go ahead and repeat that on this side this side and this side and I will meet you at this corner to finish it off. And once we get there to the last side it's a little hard to see but what I like to look for is the chain three from the beginning of the last round. It looks a little skinny compared to the rest of the double crochets so that's when I know okay the spot right before that must be my last chain one space. So I've double crocheted three right here in the three double crochets of that last sixth side. And then I'm going to do the same thing I've done in every corner, which is a double crochet twice, and then a chain twice, and then another two double crochets. So you can see your um, hexagon starting to look a little bit wavy, and that is exactly how it should look, because that's what gives it enough slack to be able to fold it into the cardigan shape. Okay, so we've finished that last corner, and now, just like before, we're gonna slip stitch into the chain three from the beginning of the round, and that's what's gonna finish off this round. So now we're on round three, and from here on out, we're gonna do only two kinds of rounds. They're either gonna be a solid double crochet round where we double crochet in each stitch, or they're gonna be what we're gonna do in round three here, which is what creates those little, almost I like to think of them like windows, and they're created by chain one spaces. So there's kind of the window round, and then there's the double crochet round. So let's start with our first window round, and from here on out, we're gonna be alternating a window round by a double crochet round by a window round by a double crochet round. So to do that round three window round, we're gonna chain four. So that's one more than we have been. And I'm not going crazy with these chains. I'm doing them sort of tightly so that I don't end up with a really big gap. But this four chains counts as one double crochet and one chain one space. So from here, once I have that, I'm gonna skip my first double crochet. So that's this one right here. If I'm ever confused, I look at where that chain three from the beginning of the previous round was, and then I know, okay, this is the one I skip. That's the second double crochet of the round. And then I'm gonna double crochet into the next stitch. So it's technically like the third double crochet of the round. And that's what creates my first chain one space window. So we're gonna repeat that to the, end of the row, to the end of the side, but that's actually only one more time. So we're gonna chain one to make a chain one space, and then we're gonna skip a double crochet and double crochet into the next one. So this pattern has a lot of safety checks because you will find that you should always be ending your last window right when you're getting to a corner. So if somehow it landed right in this stitch, that would be wrong and you, you would be able to go back and figure out where your error was. But I've made one chain one space here and one here, and now we're at the corner. So at the corner, we need to increase just like we did in the other rounds, but we're gonna do it slightly differently. We're going to chain one, and then we're going to double crochet once into that corner. So we've created an extra chain one space there, and then I'm going to 
chain two, so that's just like the other round, and then I'll double crochet back into the same corner, and then chain one again, and then I will be starting my first double crochet of the next side. So that can go in that first stitch of that side here. And what you'll notice is that we're increasing at the corner by the same number of stitches we were in the previous round. We're just doing it in uh, a chain and a double crochet and then a chain and double crochet instead of two double crochets there and two over there. So it should have the same, it has the same geometry essentially. So from here I'm going to chain one and I'm going to repeat that same pattern we were working over here. So that means I will skip the next stitch. I've got that chain already made so I will double crochet into the next stitch then. And then I'm going to chain one again, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the next one. So we're making windows all the way across. I'm chaining one and then I'm skipping the next stitch and double crocheting into the next one. So again, I've made it to a corner. So let's repeat that corner sequence one more time. I chain one at the corner and then I double crochet into the corner. We made a chain one space there. Now I'm going to chain two and double crochet in the corner again. Then I'll chain one again and double crochet into the first double crochet of the side. So this round is nothing but chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, except for at the corners where you chain two. So then I'm going to chain one again, skip the next double crochet, and work into the next double crochet. So we're gonna repeat that sequence all the way around, so you're gonna complete this side by skipping one, double crocheting in the next one, um, just like that to the corner where you will work a double crochet, a chain two, and then a double crochet again. And you can work all the way back to where this round began right here and I will meet you in this last corner actually because then I'll tell you how to complete the last little stretch of the first side from the beginning of the round. And again, I'll just mention that if you're a fan of stitch charts, there's one in the ad-free printable PDF that you can buy. And I find for patterns like this, they are so helpful. It's so much faster to look at a chart than to read the written pattern. And here at the end of the round, you can see here's the beginning because that's my chain four. So I'm at that last corner right here. And to work the last corner, we're gonna do the same thing we have all around this round, which is chain one, double crochet into that chain one or chain two space. And then I'm going to chain two, double crochet in that space once more, and then chain one, and double crochet into the first stitch of that side. So if you look now, we're right back where we started. And if we skip the next stitch, as we typically would after we double crochet, we're right at the first a double crochet, or it's the chain four, but we're calling it a double crochet, of the round. So we can chain one and then slip stitch into that chain four space. And doing so, we'll perfectly complete this side. And you can consult the free written pattern because it will tell you how many chain one spaces you should have in this round and all the rest of the rounds. So that's a really helpful way to keep on track to make sure you didn't screw something up somewhere and just periodically count your number of stitches on a side. So now's the perfect time to talk about something that's critical to understanding the rest of the pattern. And this graphic is included in both the free pattern on the blog as well as the PDF. And what this is showing you here is that each hexagon, we're gonna call it by a number, each side. So this is side one, two, three, four, and we go around like this. So we're starting right here at this is where each round is starting. So you can kind of think of it as the top of your clock. That is always side one, where the round starts. And then this is side two, three, four, five, and six. Now, if you're left-handed, you're gonna be working this direction. I'm obviously right-handed. If you're left-handed, you're working this direction, which is totally fine. You'll end up with the same hexagon at the end, and then the graphic 
uh, includes instructions for where you're going to attach your yarn for other parts of the pattern. But I wanted to point this out because in the written pattern you're going to see some notes that will talk about which side has a certain number of stitches or it might toward the end it talks about which sides you need to fold together. So you can think of these as the name is kind of permanently attached. So this is always side one even if I flip it over and turn it like this or this is always side four and that gives us just a common language to talk about what part of the hexagon we're referencing. So from here out in the pattern we're going to alternate double crochet rows by chain one space rows and there's something important to note about the double crochet rows that I'm going to show you in a second but the side one like we just talked about is going to be the side that becomes your sleeve so if you think about it it's going to get folded kind of like this and there's a miniature sweater that can show you side one is folded up like this and your arm would go here and this would be your body. So because we don't want the sleeve to grow quite as wide as the rest of the sweater, we're gonna be doing one decrease stitch only on the double crochet rounds and it's only gonna happen on side one. So you'll see that in the pattern, that is in round four and each time you repeat round four, you're gonna start it off with a decrease. So that's why the stitch count for side one is always gonna be a little different than the other sides because you're always gonna be decreasing one stitch. But I don't want you to feel worried about what a decrease is because I'm just about to show you. To start round four, we're gonna chain three and that counts as our double crochet again. And then our decrease stitch, it's gonna be a double crochet three together. So those three stitches are going to be this chain one space, this double crochet and this chain one space. So we're going to work a stitch that's a lot easier than it sounds, but it's going to take three double crochets and combine them into one stitch. So I yarn over and insert my hook in the first space and then I have three loops on my hook and I will yarn over and pull over just like I'm going to finish my double crochet but instead of finishing I keep that second loop on my hook and then I move on to the next stitch which is this double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook there, yarn over and come back and I'm going to work through those first two loops. So now we have three loops on our hook. You can see these are two like half of a double crochet there and we're going to do that one more time in the next chain one space. So we've got two loops there, yarn over and pull through those two. So now you should have four loops on your hook and we're going to yarn over and combine all of those loops into one stitch. So what we've done is taken those three stitches and turned them into what looks only like one stitch at the top and it will count as one stitch in our pattern. So from here it's very simple the rest of this round because we're just going to double crochet in each stitch and then do something very similar in the corners. So I'm going to double crochet in that double crochet and then I'm going to double crochet in the next chain one space and we're going to just double crochet in each stitch and chain one space to the corner. So now I've made it to the corner and we're going to do the same thing we did in the double crochet rounds before. So that's two double crochets. Followed by two chains. And then two more double crochets. Okay, so that's how our corners will always look on our double crochet rounds. We've got two double crochets, two chains, two double crochets. So on all the rest of the sides here, we are going to double crochet in each double crochet and each chain one space. So it's just like we did in the rounds before, it's just now we're working into just some chain one spaces too. Like this, and we're going to repeat this all the way around the round. So. It's doing that same thing in the corners and working in every stitch on the sides. And let's finish that up and then I'll meet you back at the last part of the round just to make sure that that part is clear. And here we are back at the end of the round. Again, I've stopped at the last corner, so we're gonna repeat what we've done in the other corners, which is two double crochets, chain two, and then two double crochets. So from here, I'm going to do just what we have on the other sides where I double crochet in the first double crochet, double crochet in the next space, and then the last actual double crochet. And then what we have left is just one chain one space. So I'm going to work into that. And then we have, 
It's important to know that we have this chain three and that still counts as its own stitch, even though it kind of feels like it's blending into our decrease. So I will slip stitch into that chain three and that is what is going to close up the round and we're gonna always count that as a stitch. So to begin round five here, it's exactly the same thing we did on round three. So that's that chain one space window round. And I'm going to start with four chains and then we're gonna skip our first stitch. So our first stitch is actually the decrease stitch from the last round. It's right here. So it's that V and we're gonna work into the next stitch right here. So I'm gonna double crochet right here. And then from here, we do the same thing we did before, which is chain one, skip a stitch, and then double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet in the next stitch. And then we're back at the corner here, so I'm gonna chain one, double crochet in the corner space, and then chain two, double crochet in that corner space again, chain one and then double crochet into the first double crochet of that side. So now we've turned the corner and we can proceed along the side and the rest of the sides by doing a chain one, skipping the next double crochet and then double crocheting the next one. So if you work in that pattern all the way around, it's just like round three and you'll come back over here and do the same thing we did in round three. You just have more stitches now. So you'll still work into this corner, uh, the first double crochet of the side and then skip one, double crochet here, skip one, double crochet here, and then skip one and then slip stitch into this chain four. So let's do that one more time. I think that one is pretty intuitive now and I'll show you one more time how to work the decrease round. So now that we're at the end of round five, we've learned both of the two kinds of rounds you need to complete your hexagon. So that is round three, which is just a regular chain one space window round right here. It's the same thing you did on round five. And then round four, which is when we did double crochets everywhere except for a double crochet three together at the beginning of the round. So it's that double crochet round and the chain one window round that are gonna repeat for a bunch of times now. The number of repeats depends on the size that you're making. So go ahead and check the written pattern for that. And while you're there, make sure that periodically you're counting the number of stitches on a side, whether they're chain one spaces or double crochets, and verify that against the written pattern because that'll help you catch if you've made an error somewhere because you'll be tracking how many stitches should be on each side. So let's review really quickly how we do that double crochet three together just to make sure you've got it before I set you loose to finish your two hexagons. So I'm going to chain three. That's my first double crochet, and it's separate from the double crochet three together. So here I've got one, two, three stitches I'm gonna work together. So I'm gonna start by yarning over and then yarning over again. I've got three loops on my hook, so I will yarn over and pull through two of them. Now I have two loops. Now I'm gonna work into the double crochet and yarn over and go through two of them. So now I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, go through the next chain one space, and yarn over again. So now I should have four loops on my hook. And that means it's time to yarn over and pull through all four, which turns that into one stitch. So we've got our chain three here, and then our first double crochet, and then we're just gonna double crochet in each stitch to the end of this side. So that's all you need to do to know how to do both rounds of the hexagon. So go ahead and complete this one based on the number of rounds you need to do for your size and then make an identical second hexagon using the exact same pattern. Okay, so once you have two hexagons made, it's time to add to a little bit of an extension to a couple of these sides, and that's gonna form the back Y, uh, increase the width of the back of your sweater, as well as increase the length at the bottom. So right now I have one hexagon laying here with side one at the top, and we're calling it side one because that's where the rows, or the rounds, I should say, started and stopped. You can see right here, I fastened off right there because it ended there and this is also where those decreases took place. So when I'm looking at my hexagon, I have the right side facing up. So lay yours out with the right side facing up and that's how we're gonna count these sides here. So this is one, this is two, and then we have three kind of hiding down here, four hiding down here, 
five, and then six up here. So to fold this up, it's pretty simple, but it's kind of helpful to have someone show you. I'm going to fold the top corners of side one and bring them to touch each other. And again, I'm gonna put the wrong side in right now just because that'll help you visualize what it'll look like when it's actually a sweater. But side one now has a crease in it. And when that happens, you're kind of looking at what will be your sleeve right here. So if you have that folded, then there should be two other corners that kind of naturally come together. These two right here. So actually this is, this is side one, so this is side two, and this is side six that's coming together there. And then down here, we're gonna bring this other corner together. And this is gonna be the, kind of like the front and back of your cardigan. And here's the sleeve. So we're gonna make this into the left side of the sweater just because it's easy to think about. If you lifted this up and put it on your body, it would form the left side of the sweater. So in the written pattern, what we're doing next is called the left side. And it's gonna vary a little bit from the right side just in where we attach the yarn on which side because we wanna make kind of a mirror image on each hexagon so that we form two sides of the sweater. At any point of this, if you start getting confused which side is side one, which is side six, uh, one thing you could do is just safety pin a little note to yourself and say this is side one, this is side six, this is side five, um, kind of like a little name tag because once it gets folded up it's a bit of a geometry puzzle to kind of remember which one is which. But when we are starting with the left side of the sweater here, we're gonna want to begin at the corner of side five. So we have side one here. This is size six that's closest to us, and so that makes this side five. And when I lift it up, I'm gonna want the back to be facing me. So that's the wrong side, because we're gonna start crocheting on the wrong side of it. So here's that side five. And this is the case because I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna attach my yarn right over here on the corner of side five, and then I'm gonna work this direction, and then I'm gonna work around the corner and go down this way on side four. Now, if you are left-handed, you're gonna to wanna to attach your yarn over here in this corner right here, which is at the corner of side four. So the reason you're doing that is because you're gonna start here, and then you're gonna crochet this direction like a lefty, okay? but because we're working the right-handed version here, because it'd be tricky for me to do anything else, we're gonna attach our yarn right here in this corner. So here we are looking at the wrong side of the fabric. This is side five, because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you want this to be side four, and you're gonna be starting at the corner that's on the other side over here. But because I'm right-handed, I'm going to attach my yarn right here. I have a slip knot on my hook. I'm just gonna go through that chain two corner space there and then yarn over and pull the yarn through that slip knot. And then I'll tighten it down like that. And from here, what we're gonna do is work the same kind of row we've been doing when we do these chain one space rows, except for we're just gonna do it on two sides instead of all the way around the hexagon. So this is gonna form the back middle part as well as the bottom of the sweater. So to get started, I'm gonna chain four and this is just kind of like the beginning of a round when we did these chain spaces before. But then I'm going to double crochet right here into that first double crochet. And when I do that, I'm gonna have made my first chain one space. And then I'll chain one, and then I'm gonna skip the next double crochet and then work into the next one. So I'm going right in here. And this is a very important time to make sure that what you're doing is lining up with the previous round, okay? So we want those windows to line up again like we have all along. And we kind of have this little safety check right here. So I'm skipping a double crochet and then I'm creating another double crochet right here. So again, I'm just working those windows like we have all the previous rounds. And I'm gonna work just like this, doing my chain one, skip a double crochet, and then double crochet in the next one, all the way to the end of this side five. So I'll meet you over here in the corner that you can't see because it's off camera. But we'll work to this corner and then I'll show you what to do and we'll work down this other side. Okay, and here we are, we've made it to the corner. So I've worked my last double crochet 
right here and we're gonna work the corner just like we have other corners. So I'm gonna, whoops, I'm going to chain one and then I'm gonna double crochet right here in that corner and then I'll chain two and double crochet in that corner again and then chain one. So this is just like what we did before to increase around that corner and then I'm going to double crochet right in that first double crochet. And now we're gonna work the second side here, which for me is side four. Okay, if you're working the left-handed version, this is gonna be your side five, but I'm gonna do the same thing I did on side five. We're gonna do this all the way to the end of only the side. We're gonna stop when we get to the corner over here and I'll show you what to do then. And as I come here to the corner on the second side, I'm going to work a double crochet in my last double crochet, and then I'm gonna chain one and double crochet into that chain two space at the corner, and then I am gonna be done with this side. So you can see we're stopping just short of when we do the chain two and then another double crochet and all that business. So we've just added one more double crochet in the chain two corner to kind of make this um, an even edge because this is gonna end up being the edge of the front of your cardigan here. So now we're gonna turn, for the first time in this whole project, we're gonna turn like a regular row and work back in this direction along this side and then along the first side that we worked. So we're gonna continue in that pattern of a chain one space row and then a double crochet row. So as I turn this, I'm going to chain three because we're gonna work our double crochets now. And to do so, we're gonna do just the same thing we've done all along, where I'm gonna skip that first double crochet because the chain three is counting as it, and then I'm going to work a double crochet right here in that chain one space. So we've got one there, one there. We're gonna put a double crochet in every double crochet in every chain one space from here along this entire side until we get to the corner. So you can see it's pretty straightforward given that you've already done a whole lot of this in your hexagons already. And once we get to that corner here, that's, this is between the two sides we've been working, we're gonna do it just like we did a normal corner during the hexagon. So I've actually got one double crochet in there already, so I'll take it out so you can see the whole thing. This is my corner here, so I'm going to double crochet in that corner twice. There's one. Two, I'm gonna chain two, and then I'm gonna put two more double crochet in there. So this is just the same thing we've been doing all along. And we're doing this because we want to extend the corner while we extend the sides as well. That'll keep all the geometry the same. So from here, we're gonna continue just like we did on the previous sides. We're gonna double crochet in this first double crochet here, and then we'll double crochet in the chain one space, and we'll proceed like that. And when I get to the end of this side here, we're gonna be back where we started row one. So that's where we've got our double crochet and then the chain four. And when you get to this part here, you're gonna to wanna to double crochet here and then you're gonna put two double crochets in this last space because one is gonna count for the chain one space and then one's gonna count for this chain which is uh, the equivalent of a double crochet. So you'll do this entire side here, double crocheting in each stitch and then you'll get to the end and you'll place two double crochets in this last space. And from there, uh, we're gonna repeat this same sequence a few times. So the chain one space row followed by a double crochet row. And the number of rows you do like that is gonna depend on the size you're making, but the entire time these rows are worked along the two sides. So this is where we started. I'm gonna get down here and then we'll work back the other direction and work just along those two sides. So this is kind of the equivalent of just working the two sides of an L. And that's what's gonna form, again, the back section and the bottom of the sweater. And so once you work your correct number of those sequence of rows, then we'll work on the sleeve. So let's go, let's go ahead and do a few more rows like that and then I'll meet you back here and teach you about the sleeve. Okay, so once we've completed those extra rows, this is what it should look like. We have an, a little bit of extra hanging off 
which is going to go down the middle of your back here and then the bottom should be even but it's just longer than it was before and if you take a look here this is what that edge of the extension looks like so we've got our regular hexagon is ending right here and then we've got those extra rows we just worked so now let's take a look at the second hexagon because we're going to do the same thing on it we're just going to start in a different place Okay, so for the right side of your sweater, it looks like it's the left here, but if I lifted it up and put it on my body, it would be the right. So I've already gone ahead and worked this extra extension for the back and the bottom, and that's because it's exactly the same thing we just did, so you don't really need a step-by-step -step tutorial. But I did want to point out that you're going to want to attach your yarn in a different spot than we did before, and that's so that we can make this kind of a mirror image of the first hexagon. So over here, off camera, we have my side one, and this is side six and this is side five at the front of my hexagon so right down here at the bottom the bottom side is side four and just like before I started with the wrong side facing so when I had the bottom of side four here the bottom of the sweater I attached my yarn right here at this corner at the bottom of side four so that's the very front of the sweater and then I did the same thing we did with the previous hexagon where I worked a row of chain one spaces and I worked all the way around the corner and then I went on to side three so side three is what comes up the back here so then I turned around and I did the row of double crochet it's just the same thing we did before but it attaches at the corner of row four or of side four and then is worked on side four and side three now if you're left-handed you're going to do the opposite of this just like we did before so if you're left-handed you're going to attach your yarn with the wrong side facing here right up here at the top corner of this is side three so it's kind of like you're attaching it right at the back of your neck right here this is for lefties you'd start here and then work on the back of the side three and then to the bottom here on side four and then back and forth on three and four so once you complete that we can move on to working the sleeves all right so this is one of the sleeves that's finished and I wanted to show it to you before I teach you how to work it just so you see what we're going for here so this is side one if you remember that's the side that we've been doing those decreases on and that's where our rows started and stopped so you should be able to spot these decreases it's gonna be the shortest side of your hexagon and here you can see what I've done this is where the hexagon ended and then what I've done is just extended the sleeve here with some more rows worked in the same pattern and I've continued with that double crochet three together decrease so we've got decreases continuing here and what that has done it has allowed the sleeve to continue to narrow just a little bit with each row to get started with either sleeve now they're worked identically so you can start with whichever hexagon you want but to what we want to do first is put a stitch marker in the top of the decrease stitch that was worked in the last round of the hexagon so this is where I double crocheted three together and it formed one double crochet stitch then and I put my marker right here and that's what's going to tell me where to decrease again when I come back to this point working the sleeve so I've got that this is the right side of my fabric and that's a little easier for me to see where the stitch is here but now I'm going to turn my hexagon over because we're going to attach our yarn with the wrong side of the hexagon facing us so whether you're right or left-handed you're going to do this part the same and we're going to start with a slip knot on our hooks just like we did before so that we can attach our yarn in the chain two corner space right over here so this is side one and I'm putting my yarn in the right hand corner because I'm right handed if you're left handed you're going to do everything the same here but you're going to attach your yarn over here in the left corner because you're going to work this direction from here I am going to chain four because we're going to work a chain one space one of those chain one window rows first because that's what we've always been alternating here and we just worked a double crochet round in the last round of our hexagon so now we're going to work this same chain one space row and i'm going to double crochet into that first double crochet and then chain one skip one double crochet and then double crochet into 
the next double crochet. So just like on our other extensions, we wanna just check down here and make sure everything's lined up. You can see this double crochet is lined up with the new sort of side of the window I'm working there, so we're all looking good. And I'll do one more just to show you what I mean here. All these are lined up. So now we're gonna repeat this pattern, and as I come upon the decrease stitch here, it's also just a little bit wonky because there was that chain and the slip to stitch here. So I just wanna show you with a little bit more detail what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna chain one, I'm skipping over the marked stitch because that's just the pattern I'm in. I worked a double crochet here, I'm skipping this one. And then here is what is a double crochet, we're calling it a double crochet, but it's really my chain from the last round. So I'm just gonna work kind of into that. Um, if you were really detailed, you could kind of work into the chain. I'm just working in the hole there and it'll work just fine. But then I'm going to chain one and it's kind of hard to see, but that chain is counting as a double crochet and then so is the next stitch. And the way that I know where to put my hook next is by looking at what's happening underneath. So it's telling me that here's that one I just worked in the chain, there's one down here, that I'm skipping this one, and then we're making sure we're lining up with this chain one space row down here. So I'm going to insert my hook here, and we've braved the rapids and made it out just fine because I can see that once again, my double crochets are lining up just right. So now I can take out this marker, and because I worked a chain over that. I'm just gonna put it right here. So let's continue on this row. We're gonna do that chain one space, double crochet, until we get to the corner on the other side of side one. And as I come here to the end of this side, I've worked a double crochet into that last double crochet, and then here's my chain two space at the corner. So just like we did in those previous extensions, I'm gonna chain one and then place one double crochet in that chain two space. And that's just kind of extending our extension out to be the same um, sort of in line with the side right here. So now we should have something that looks like this. We've added an extra chain one space over here and one at the other side. And now we're gonna turn around and work a row of double crochet, just like we always have before. But when we get to that stitch marker, that's where we're gonna do our decrease. So to start this row, I'm going to chain three, just like we always do. And then I'm going to skip the first double crochet because that is this is compensating for that, and then I'm gonna work into that chain one space, and then I will double crochet into each double crochet and chain one space until I get near that marker, and then we'll talk about what's gonna happen there. And now that we're coming up upon our stitch marker here, we're gonna work our double crochet three together decrease. I'm gonna work one more double crochet into here, and then I've got my marker that's telling me, hey, just time to decrease. So I'm gonna do it in this chain one space, double crochet, chain one space. So to do that, I'm gonna yarn over, grab my yarn, yarn over again. So I have part of a double crochet there. And then I'm gonna do that again in this double crochet. And then one more time in the second window. So now I should have four loops on my hook. And then I'm gonna pull, yarn over and pull through all four of them. So we've taken three stitches and turned them into one. And now I'm gonna take the marker that I had before and I'm gonna move it up a row. And so I'm gonna put it right here in the top of that double crochet. And then doing that is gonna remind me when I come back again that I need to decrease there on my next double crochet row. So to complete this row, we're just going to continue working into every chain one space and every double crochet to the end of the side. Okay, so we're coming upon the end of row two here, and I'm going to work one more double crochet in there, and then that makes up for the chain space that's making the window, and then I'm gonna work one more double crochet, and that's going to be, that's gonna sort of count as the last double crochet that lines up with the turning chain here. So what you should have now looks just like an extension of your hexagon side. And we're gonna continue like this uh, for as many rows as your sleeve size indicates in the written pattern. 
All right, it's finally time to seam. And while you may not love seaming, this is when our big hexagon amoebas finally take the shape of a sweater. So I find this to be the most satisfying part. And to seam, we're gonna use a tapestry needle threaded with the same color yarn, and we're just gonna use one strand so you don't have to fold it over all the way. And what I've done here is safety pinned my two hexagon back pieces together. So it's hard to see, but this is the bottom of the sweater right here. And this is the top right here, like where the neck is. And then each sleeve is going off of the side here. So when you line these up to pin them, I find the easiest way to make sure that they're fully lined up is just to count these chain spaces. So I did that and made sure that they're pinned appropriately because as you're working, you're gonna wanna seam stitch for stitch. So this just helps you kind of keep track, make sure you're on the right um, rhythm of not making it to the end being off by a stitch or two and while you're at it I say this is a great time to just count your stitches overall because if somewhere something went wrong and you maybe missed a stitch or something it's gonna show up right here and that's okay if you just missed one or two you're just gonna want to accommodate that in the seam so you don't end up with those extra stitches hanging off at the top or the bottom so go ahead and pin your pieces like this and then we're gonna start our seam down here at the bottom of the sweater and because I'm right-handed I like to do my seaming from the right here to the left so I can work like this with my right hand. If you're left-handed, just turn your sweater around so that the bottom is over here and then work from the bottom this direction up to the top over here. And I don't tend to tie a lot of knots in my projects, so I'm just going to weave this in down here and leave a little bit of a tail that I can weave uh, in more at the end. So I'm just gonna leave that hanging right here. And then we're gonna do a simple stitch where we're working back and forth in only the top loops of our stitches. So right here, I've got that V for each crochet, um, for each double crochet. And we're just gonna work through the stitch, the loop that's closest to the top right here. So I'm gonna get started by working through the chain two space over here because we wanna make sure that both bottom edges are lined up. And then we're gonna work, it's basically the mattress stitch, working back and forth like this, and then like this, and then like this, lining up these stitches as we go. So I've come with my yarn out on this side over here. So now I'm gonna work back through the next stitch, the top loop only. This piece wants to be the center of attention. We'll move it over here. and through the top loop only, and then I'm gonna come back and pick up the top loop only on the other side with the coordinating stitch there. So then I pull this a little bit and should make sure that lines up. And then I'm gonna go back through the next stitch on the same side and then through the next stitch on the opposite side, just the top loop. And we're gonna work all the way to the top here and then you can fasten your yarn off at the neck and then we'll do the same thing that we're doing here for both sleeves. And then you will have an almost finished sweater on your hands. All right, next up, we're gonna seam the sleeve and I have pinned it again, just like we did with the back where I've lined up the these are the corners of the hexagon here and then I've lined up these chain one spaces so that I can make sure that everything will line up as I finish the seam. And we're gonna start right here. This is the wrist. So this is a little different edge to seam because it's not part of the hexagon. And I've got a fresh new piece of yarn and the tapestry needle. We're gonna work back and forth just like we did before. And we're just gonna work uh, slightly differently because we're working through this raw edge here, but basically we're just picking up a couple strands, working under one or two loops of the double crochet or chain that's at the edge here, and then picking up a couple on the other side. And in the same pattern that we worked before where we go out on this side and then back in on the same side and across, I am going to kind of, it's kind of like a zigzag but um, more straight lines because we're working back and forth like this. And I'm as I'm doing this, I'm just making sure to keep these visual rows lined up. So I want to make sure that the lines of chain one spaces line up and the lines of double crochets lined up. And I'm going to work like this, 
back and forth until I get to the hexagon part of the sleeve right here. And then I'll do the same thing I did before where I'm only working through the top loop back and forth, just like we did on the back, all the way up to the side of the shoulder. And after we finish that, we are going to repeat the same process on the second sleeve. Okay, so for the sleeve here, you can work an optional cuff that takes this somewhat wider sleeve and scrunch it in so that it has that kind of poofy look around your wrist and then is a little tighter down by your hand. And this is the sleeve we've already finished, um, or I should say we've worked this far where this is the extension, we've seamed it, and now you can choose to either leave it like this wider or create this tighter cuff, which is on this side. And this is just a series of single crochet decreases and then some single crochet rounds, and that makes it a little bit tighter down by your hand. So the sample shows this, but if you're happy with how this looks, just keep it like that and move on to the next section. We're going to start with a slip knot on our hooks to attach the yarn, and you maybe already have yarn attached, which you can just use that, but if not, we're going to be attaching into this chain three. So that was at the end or at the beginning of a row from the extension. You can find the chain three. It also should be right on the seam that's going up the kind of top of your arm right here. So I'm going to slip stitch this into the chain three, and you should have an odd number of double crochets right now going around your wrist. So we are going to eliminate one right off the bat by just not working into this chain three. So instead I'm going to chain one and here I'm going to double or sorry single crochet two together. So that means I've yarned over like I'm going to finish that single crochet but instead of finishing it all the way I'm going to go through the next stitch yarn over and I have three now and then I'm going to pull through all three of those. So it's very similar to that decrease we were doing on the sleeve, but what it's doing is taking two double crochets and turning them into one single crochet. And it can be a good idea to put like a stitch marker or a safety pin or something in that first stitch so that you know where the round begins. From here, I'm going to work single crochet decreases all the way around. So that's going to be single crochet two together. So I'm inserting my hook in that stitch, yarning over, pulling up, then going to the next stitch, yarning over, pulling up, and I've got three now, yarning over and going through all those. So again, I've taken two stitches and turned them into one. So we're gonna continue like this all the way around the sleeve. And once you've finished your first round of decreases here, we're back to that marked first single crochet stitch. So I'm just going to go into that stitch and slip stitch, and that's what's gonna kind of close off this round. And then from here, I'm going to be doing a single crochet two together and then a regular single crochet. I chained one here for the second round. Then I'm going to do that decrease. So I insert my hook there, yarn over, insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over, and then yarn over through all three loops. So I've just decreased one. And now I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch, just a regular single crochet. So I've done a decrease, a regular stitch, now I'm gonna do another decrease. And then I'm just gonna repeat that pattern all the way around. And then we're gonna be done decreasing and just work a few rounds of regular single crochet. So as I come to the end of that round, I just wanna show you in case you're not that familiar with working in the round with single crochet, we got a lot going on here. And here I worked my last single crochet and then I've got a few things to look at. This is my slip stitch right here. So I'm not gonna work into that. And then the next thing is my chain. So I'm also not gonna work into that. But my marked stitch is my first single crochet. So I'm going to take out my marker and then I'm just going to do a slip stitch into that stitch. So the slip stitch from the previous round gets skipped as well as the chain. So we've closed that up now. I'll put my marker back in here. And then from here, we're gonna work three rounds of regular single crochet with no increasing or decreasing. So I've got a chain one, and then I'm going to just single crochet in each stitch. And when I get back to the um, beginning here, I'll slip stitch to this first stitch to join. So let's do that for three rounds, and then you can fasten off and go ahead and repeat the same process on your second sleeve. So once you have your sleeves finished and your whole sweater is assembled, now you can try it on and get a feel for how you like the length. And this part is where you can really customize. If you want it to be a little bit longer, we can add an extension to the bottom, just like we've extended the other sections. And you can really make that just as long as you want to cover your tush.
So to get started, I have the wrong side facing here. This is the bottom of the sweater now. So this is the front corner and over here is where the seam is in the middle of the back. And you're just gonna wanna have the wrong side facing. So if you're left-handed, you're gonna be starting at the opposite corner, the opposite front corner. I've just done that slip knot trick to attach my yarn in the corner. And then I'm going to chain four because we're gonna do the little chain one window row first, just like we have been and alternate so I'm going to skip the first double crochet and the second double crochet and then work into the third double crochet just like we have been at the beginning of a row of an extension so that lines up these two double crochets I am still on that same pattern I've been doing all along and then I will chain one and skip a double crochet and then double crochet into the next one so you should be an old pro at this by this point. I'm not gonna belabor the point. We're skipping one, double crocheting in the next one. And the way that this works is you'll do this all the way across this bottom edge. So eventually you're gonna come to this section where you joined the two hexagons and we're gonna be working, um, you'll work obviously into this double crochet here and then you'll do a chain one space and a double crochet into this middle part here and then a chain one space and then a double crochet into this next double crochet so the only thing you're really adding here is a chain one space a double crochet in the middle of the seam and a chain one space and then you'll pick up right with your double crochets and you'll carry on to the other side of the front of the cardigan so once you finish that row of chain one spaces the next step is very similar to everything we've done before where you're going to double crochet in each chain one space and each double crochet all the way across placing a double crochet at the end in the turning chain so we're going to start this row with a chain three this is much like we've done on everything else before and we're just doing this to extend the bottom of the sweater so that means you can totally check out the free written pattern to see how many rows you may want to work of this extension but if you are happy with just two rows stop there if you feel like you want a much longer sweater you can go for that too you may want if you are going to work pockets to leave a little bit of yarn left to do your pockets but other than that you can really just keep going with this pattern until you're happy with the length and once we finish our last row of our, the bottom extension here we are going to keep our yarn attached because we're going to work a simple border of single crochet right around the front of the sweater, up back around the neck and down the other side of the cardigan. So whether you uh, skipped the extension altogether and just want to attach your yarn to the bottom corner of the hexagon, so that would be like you had this, you would attach your yarn right here to the bottom, um, this would be the bottom right corner if you're right handed or the bottom left corner if you're left handed. Um, but if you did work that extension you'll have these extra rows and you're going to start in the same spot so you can keep your yarn attached here and what we're going to do is just work single crochets starting with the chain one and then we're going to single crochet twice in each of these vertical rows of the extension so there's two single crochets going in there and then we're going to put two in this row right here and we're going to work like this um, in the next few rows of the extension and then once we get to our hexagon here we're going to place single crochet in this chain two space little um, corner window there and then just single crochet in each of these double crochets all the way up to the neck. We're coming upon the neck, the back of the neck here, and so I'm going to work a single crochet in my last, um, this is the corner of the hexagon, so it's a chain two space. I'm going to put a single crochet there, and then we've got a bunch of vertical rows again, just like we did at the bottom um, at the edge, and so we're going to just work two single crochets into each of those rows. And then we'll continue down the front of the opposite side, working again a single crochet in each double crochet stitch. And then we'll finish off the front by placing two single crochets into each vertical row of that bottom extension, just like we did on the other side. And I'll just say as you work this collar border around that it's not the most critical thing to make sure you catch every stitch or work the perfect number into the perfect into each row. It's more about getting a really smooth edge so that the front of your cardigan looks clean and tidy. So 
just um, take a step back every once in a while and look, make sure that the row of single crochet is looking flat and then you'll be in good shape. The pockets require no new skills and they're the same for each size. So I'm going to breeze through them pretty quickly. To start, we need 27 chains and we're going to skip the first three chains and double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and then each chain to the end of the row. And for row two, we're going to chain four. So this is going to be our little chain one window row and we're going to skip the first double crochet, the second double crochet, and then work into the third double crochet with a double crochet. And so this is just like those extensions that we worked. There's nothing different about this. And then I'm going to chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet in the next one. So you can see this is all really familiar. You're going to work a row of double crochet followed by a row of chain one window spaces, and you're going to keep doing that pattern until you have a total of 11 rows. So that's when you'll have the pocket size you need and you'll make a second one of those and then we can seam them on. Okay, so once you've completed two pockets, you can pin them onto your sweater, sort of in the position that you think looks good. I'll show you here where mine are and you can pause the video if you wanna see how many rows are down here below the pocket and over here on the side. But it's gonna vary, probably the placement will look better depending on the size that you're making. You'll wanna move it around a little bit. But essentially what we're doing here is making sure we line up this bottom row of double crochet with a row in the sweater of double crochet. So we've got that lined up here as well as up here at the top. We've got double crochet so we're lining that up right here with double crochet. And then similarly we're just lining up this edge with one of the rows of double crochet. And that's just going to help make sure that it's square on the sweater. And then from here we're just going to whip stitch this pocket on. So if you've never done a whip stitch it's sort of just like working in um, kind of like a spiral stitch. So we're just going around, around, around. So the way that looks is I'm picking up a couple strands of yarn from the back and then coming back through the front of the pocket and pulling my yarn through, tightening it down, not too tight, but snug enough that it's secure. And then going over the top again, around and back through the edge of the pocket. And each stitch is worked in the same way and in the same direction. So again, and we're going to just do this all the way around. Um, obviously not the top of the pocket because then your hand would have no place to go, but um, the three main sides and then you can fasten off and weave in this tail and then do the same thing on the second pocket on the other side of your cardigan. All right, I hope you're well on your way to having a cardigan that you can wear all the time. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd love it if you signed up for my weekly email where I send out free crochet patterns and tutorials just like this. Until next time, happy crocheting!